Um, hi, uh, I'm Eugene Mandel, uh, one of the core contributors to Great Expectations and head of product for Superconductive, the company behind Great Expectations. And today we will be talking about how to not lose time and even worse, not to lose trust of your colleagues and your users who use your data due to a particular monster, pipeline debt. Uh, here's the agenda. First, we will uh, talk about the concept of pipeline debt and why, what is it, why is it bad and how it's created. Uh, then uh, we will introduce great expectations and uh, then we'll go over uh, how can you start with great expectations. So what is that pipeline debt that we want to beat? It's a uh, technical debt in data pipelines that mainly uh, occurs as a result of tests that are missing and documentation that is missing. Uh, let's take a story of a particular, of a, of a fairly typical data pipeline. Let's say that uh, your company starts a data team. In the beginning, it's probably one data scientist and your it. You find, uh, you find some useful data sets probably maybe the log events that come off the servers of your product, maybe your CRM, you find them useful, you start building a pipeline that takes them, ingests them, processes them, combines them, and produces something extremely valuable. Maybe an analytical table, maybe a dashboard. You show it to, you show it to other people, everybody is happy, and uh, everything is very good. Now, encouraged by your initial success, you get a bit bolder you notice that, uh, for example, the analytical table that your pipeline outputs can be very useful to train a model that improves some business process. So you do just that, and your pipeline just grew in depth. Uh, then another organization in your company, another team, uh, sees your success and wants to replicate it. They find their own data sets and build a parallel pipeline. Now. Uh, this system grew both in depth and in breadth. Uh, and now the other team and your team starts talking. You discover that you can benefit from some of their data and they can benefit from your data. Great. You create all those uh, new links between your pipelines and your two pipelines become one. Uh, and everything's great. You deliver, uh, you deliver value, you deliver results, everybody is happy. But this picture starts looking like a hairball. The data pipeline really wants to be a hairball. And uh, unlike what in regular software engineering is called spaghetti code, it's not a bug. This is the natural state, I believe, of data pipelines. This is how they become valuable. Uh, you, do you do deliver value, but you have this fear that if you want to refactor your pipeline. You're just afraid that by touching one thing, you will create some breakage uh, somewhere else. And debugging is a problem as well. Let's say that you found a problem in one of the nodes. Well, if you're lucky, you found the problem. If you're unlucky, it's your execs or your users found the problem. How do you debug it? Uh, you have to trace back from that node through every node in the pipeline that this node has dependency on. This robs you both of time and much worse, it robs you of the trust of users who rely on your data. So what is pipeline debt? Is when your data pipeline is undocumented, untested, and as a result of it, unstable. If you tell this story to a software engineer, uh, they will probably say that it's a solved problem. The solution is automated testing your unit tests, your integration tests, your system testing, and your CI. And that's correct. Data pipelines are software and everything that, and all the best practices of testing the code apply. But data pipelines, uh, in, addition to in addition to untrusted code that needs to be tested, bring another untrusted entity, data. And testing data is different from testing the code in two very important ways. First, you control your code. If it fails your tests, you can just change it. 
And uh, data, you're not necessarily controlled. Data might be coming off some data generating process that you observe, but cannot change. The second way is that uh, in code testing, your tests really specify correct behavior. If the test fails, the, if, if the code fails the test, it's wrong. In data testing, it's not as simple. Data is almost like a natural phenomenon that comes off the data generating process. When you use it for a particular purpose, you make assumptions about it in your pipeline. And uh, you can verify if those assumptions make this data fit for that purpose. So now that we introduced the monster, the pipeline that, uh, let's talk about how you can beat it and how, this, uh, how great expectations helps there. Uh, Great Expectations is an uh, open source project uh, for testing and documenting data that helps fighting pipeline debt. Uh, it started as a nights and weekends labor of love project of the two original authors, Abe Gong and James Campbell. It was publicly launched about two years ago, and for the past and for the past year, uh, it was under act, more active full time development backed by whole team. It is the most popular open source library for data pipeline testing. And it has a growing and very active community of users and contributors, both on GitHub and on Slack. Uh, the core concept of great expectations is uh, unsurprisingly an expectation. An expectation is a declarative statement that describes a property of a data set. Uh, let's take an example. You have a column of those values. The column is called temp, temp F, and here is what you know about this column. Uh, it's indoor temperature readings that come from some sensor that you can use in your pipeline. You start by describing the expected behavior for the data in this column. For example, values in this column should be between 55 and 90, at least 95% of the time. Uh, you know that it should be true because you know where this data comes from. Uh, all of this is done in human language and great expectations helps you to facilitate this communication about data, human to human, human to machine and machine to machine. Let's see how. Uh, you can express the same expectation using the declarative language uh, of great expectations. Let's go over it line by line. The expectation type is expect column values to be between X and Y. And in the next several lines, you see several arguments of this expectation. It applies to column temp F. The maximum expected value is 90. The minimum acceptable value is 55. And mostly argument is extremely helpful to implement some fuzzy logic. Uh, mostly 0.97 means that even if up to 3% of values in this column are non-compliant, you should not fail the whole, the whole column. This is enough for communicating between human and a machine, but you don't want to lose the context why you created this expectation. So for other human users, you can add some comment or color. You can add a note. In this case, this column contains indoor temp readings taken in California during spring and summer. Now, now we both understand why why it makes sense. The next step, and this is how you use great expectations, is when a new batch of data comes, you can validate this batch of data against this expectation. The declarative nature of an expectation allows the library to take this, dec to take this declaration and translate it into different compute engines. It can translate it into pandas, and validate a pandas data frame on, a, on, one desk, on one computer. It can translate it into Spark and can uh, validate a data frame on a Spark cluster. Or it can translate it into SQL using SQL Alchemy. And it can validate a table or a query result in multiple databases. Uh, what you can actually express using great expectations? Uh, great expectations comes with a library of a few dozen of built-in expectation types. 
uh, for example, expect column uh, to exist. Uh, behind every expectation type uh, in the library, there is probably some kind of data horror story of something going very wrong and, some, and that something could have been prevented if this expectation uh, was um, verified. Uh, every data scientist I know has their own data horror stories. Mine is, uh, for example, one of. In a previous company, we were periodically training a system to uh, provide answers to frequently asked questions in customer support. Uh, one morning I uh, come to the office and um, the last night's training results are off the chart. Just they're amazing. And one short moment of elation is replaced by disappointment when we started digging in. Apparently somebody replaced question and answer, swapped question and answer columns. And instead of training answers based on questions, the system trained itself uh, to solve a much easier, apparently, problem of uh, choosing an answer based on an answer. Of course, the, this problem was of no particular value to anybody. So here's, here are other examples uh, of uh, expectation types. Expect table row count to be between X and Y. Expect column values to be unique. I won't read through all of them, but you can reason about values of a column and you can also reason about a column in aggregate. Uh, for example, you can uh, use a KL divergence to verify that values in a column follow a particular distribution. Uh, one of the core realizations uh, that we came up at Great Expectations is that data testing and data documentation are two sides of the same coin. Everybody understands that documenting data is very important, yet it's extremely challenging to keep your data documentation uh, up to date. Uh, what Great Expectations does for that is it can take a suite of expectations, a group of expectations that describe a particular data set and render it into HTML. Then this HTML can be automatically deployed as a static website that your team can use um, as a source of truth for communicating about what data you have and what it should look like. Uh, Great Expectations also comes with um, a, lot of well, a lot of convenience um, features. A CLI that helps you deploy it um, uh, and, 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 a lot, and a lot of modules around it. It's very typical that teams that find Great Expectations they, at first, they implemented their own library for validating data, but then they discover that uh, the solving the problem requires more than a library. You have to answer the questions like how you create those tests, how you deploy them, uh, how you store results, how you communicate about the, those results. So what Great Expectations is doing, it's coming with default answers to most of those questions while remaining flexible enough to, uh, for you to provide your own answers. Uh, let's talk about uh, particular flavors of problems or of data problems or pipeline debt that great expectations can help solve them. Uh, I'll just, come, I'll just uh, talk about a couple of examples. So first, data drift. Let's say you have some kind of numeric value and your data pipeline uh, processes uh, new batches daily or hourly. Uh, your pipeline has an expectation, an assumption about what is the uh, what is the useful range, acceptable range of values in this column. But slowly over time, it keeps drifting or changing, and at some point it goes out of this assumed range, and the pipeline might produce results that make no sense. Uh, you can create an expectation for that. You can just uh, say that, well, I expect these uh, values to be between X and Y. You can create expectations about its uh, mean uh, or, or its standard deviation or any other, or any other kind of pro uh, properties of the distribution. Uh, another example is an outlier. Uh, pretty much anybody, everybody in, um, in machine learning class used to uh, write a model that predicts house prices based on some kind of data, or based on some kind of data set. Uh, 
uh, this model probably used a uh, number of bedrooms and number of bathrooms as one of its features. If this model is asked to predict the price of a mansion with, with 20 or 30 bedrooms and bathrooms, it should be smart enough to say that I just don't know because it's an outlier. Uh, now machine learning, machine learning models of course are notorious by, uh, of, uh, in, in the sense that they don't say what they don't know usually. So they will just predict and they will predict something nonsensical. You can create an expectation for that. You can say that the reasonable range of values for number of bedrooms and bathrooms are you know, between one and five or 10, but not 20 or 30. Uh, another example is outage. If the two previous examples of uh, data problems were mostly concerns of data scientists that think what the values should be, this is an example that is more of a concern to data engineers. Let's say you have a data pipeline that uh, processes daily uh, usage statistics of your product. Uh, what will it do if uh, it runs one day and it finds no new files? It might just uh, keep running happily and uh, spit out the result that uh, today your product got exactly zero new users, just without understanding what is wrong. You can create expectations for that. Um, there are many other examples of what can go wrong. Uh, of course, uh, bias in data sets is extremely important and you can create expectations for that too. Uh, how you can get started with great expectations? Check us, check us out on GitHub. Uh, it has uh, all the list of releases, basic explanation. Uh, if you check out our GitHub, uh, leaving us a star is highly appreciated. Uh, from there, you can go and read the documentation. Uh, in the last, uh, literally in the last several weeks, we are going through a very serious effort of updating our documentation to make it useful to make it very clear what, uh, like what you can use, what you can use it with, what, are the work, what, what is the workflow and how to configure everything. And uh, of course, visit uh, our Slack. We have a very active community where you can ask uh, the contributors questions, you can talk to other users and you, can stay, and you can stay up to date. And of course you can try great expectations. Uh, just install it from PIP or from Conda uh, run the init command and connect, connect it to some data set and see what it does. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I will be very happy to answer any questions and I will be extremely happy to hear your own data horror stories, which I'm sure you have as well. Thank you.